<laughs> Let me get uh, just a little, this isn't gonna affect the giveaway, but just take a little survey. How many of you would say that you shop at Whole Foods regularly right now? Okay, I have you. How many of you would say that you don't shop at Whole Foods because you think it's cost prohibitive? Okay, good, it's around half and half. I just want you to know that the reason why I'm here, why I'm doing this, is that was the feedback I was getting from a lot of my readers. Um, as Linda mentioned, I have a blog, SammyCone.com, where my whole goal is to help people live better on less. It's about living the life that you want to live uh, without sacrificing your dreams, just being a little smarter about how you do things. So I had a lot of people coming to me and saying, I noticed that you're doing some more things at Whole Foods, you're shopping more, we were trying to get healthy, um, and that's really the goal of tonight, is to show you that actually eating healthy is better than eating convenience, and I'll tell you what that means. So when I talked to Linda about saying, you know, this would be a great way to really, I think, break that myth of how expensive Whole Foods can be, they loved it, and that led to a four-part video series last year called Everyday Ways to Save at Whole Foods. I'm smart, aren't I? I know, I'm a marketing genius. So that went over so well. Again, we came to this year, and we were starting to get a little bit of that same feedback. And I've had a lot of questions lately about meal planning. And if you saw last week, I had done a, a video on meal planning around the whole deal. So what I want you to do uh, tonight is just kind of, if you do coupon, I'd love to hear your feedback later. But I'd also like you to kind of go on this journey with me. And what I'm going to do is kind of give you a start to finish of how I prep for my shopping. And hopefully, I think that's the big veil of you know the standing behind the Wizard of Oz. And everyone thinks, sure, you can do that. But how do I do that? What does it look like when you're at home getting ready to go to Whole Foods? What does it look like the week before? It, that doesn't always get conveyed. So that's what I hope to share with you tonight. Now, I also realize some of you may be like my husband. What I mean by that is that if I come home, I'm like, oh, babe, I've got this story to tell. And we went through seven years of marriage where I tell this whole story, and he didn't remember a thing I said because he was just trying to figure out what the end result was. So I told him all these details, and he had no clue what I said because he was like, did they get divorced? Did he leave? Did, did, he just needed to know. So now the way that I've learned to communicate is that I tell him the end goal, and then I go back and get to talk as long as I want because he, his mind is at ease. So do I have anyone like that here that needs kind of the big picture? Okay. I'm gonna give you the big picture and then I'm gonna rewind for those of you that are like me, that are very detail oriented, need to take your notes. Okay, so hopefully we'll make everyone happy. So what we're gonna to do tonight is I'm gonna give you the basics of couponing. For those of you that maybe haven't couponed or may have some misconceptions, we're gonna go over the basics. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how to budget your weekly shopping trip. I'm gonna help you uh, know where to find the deals that we're gonna talk about tonight, how to organize your coupons, how to prepare for your trip, like I said, um, what to walk out of the house with. Your preparation isn't very good if you don't know what to bring with you. <laughs> and then how to shop the store, and that's gonna be our tour. So that's, in a nutshell, what we're gonna go through in a fairly brief amount of time. And like Linda said, I'll be here to talk more during the tour, but I know some of you are got things to do, you've got kids to put in bed, so we're gonna give you the nitty gritty here. Okay, so let's talk about the basics of couponing. What you need to do is you need to know your prices. The great thing about Whole Foods that I don't think people realize is that it operates like any other store. And what I mean by that is that the golden rule of couponing is that you want to find your item on sale, you want to find a store coupon, and you want to find a manufacturer's coupon. And you're going to put all those things together for that moment and you go to the register and hopefully it's as close to darn free as it could possibly be. And believe me, you can do that at Whole Foods too. Sorry, Linda. <laughs> Sometimes you walk out of here with free things. It's a beautiful thing. But people don't think you can do that here, like you could at Kroger or Publix, but you can. So that's our, that's our main goal whenever we're looking at saving. We're looking for that great sale, the manufacturer's coupon, and a store coupon. Now what I mean by those two things when we talk about manufacturers and store coupons. A manufacturer's coupon is something you're gonna find in a Sunday coupon insert. You're gonna find it sometimes even in the store and those little blinkies, you'll see those little things that are um, in the aisles or by the milk, those blinkies that we call them. Um, you'll find them on websites. If you go to your favorite company's website, hopefully you guys already know that if you're want to save on uh, 
Almond Milk, you're going to first go to the Almond Milk website and see if they offer their loyal fans any coupons, okay, or Google search. Those are manufacturer's coupons. They will say on them, can't see this, on the top it literally says manufacturer's coupon, okay, as opposed to a store coupon, which is what you will find in the whole deal, and it will say redeemable only at Whole Foods Market. So that when I say that you can pair two coupons, that's what we're talking about, okay? And again, I'll go into more detail of that beautiful golden ticket later. So after you find those uh, matching coupons, hopefully for your deal, the next key is that you want to buy enough to last you about two to three months. So when you find that golden, golden moment where you find, let's say it's, for me it was flour during the holidays. Whole Foods has a great deal on organic flour and chocolate chips. Okay, no. what, are, what are you doing during November and December if you're anything like me? You're baking, right? You're doing cookies, you're going to parties, you need to bring things to, for your kids' school. So I was more than happy to get 12 bags of flour and 12 bags of chocolate chips over a series of probably those couple months when they were on sale. They're not going to expire. I'm not gonna clear the shelf with it, right? But I'm gonna get enough to get me through those three months. And the reason why that three month is key is because that's about the time it takes for the sale to come around again. When you look at most coupon cycles and most store cycles, they go in a six to 12 month cycle. So you need to know not only what is a good deal, so if you know you're gonna buy bread every week, no matter what price it is, okay? You need to know what your base price is. What is a good price for bread? Is it 250, is it 99 cents? Because you're not gonna know how to recognize a sale if you don't first recognize what a sale is, okay? So if you've never done a study, and if you've never kept a budget, what I need you to do is start keeping your receipts. And you're gonna track, let's say your five, six favorite items that you buy, no matter what, every week. If you're um, a mom, that may be bread, milk, cereal, bananas, lunch meat, okay? If you're a college student, that may be ramen noodles, you know, frozen chicken breast and chicken, whatever it is, you know, protein shakes, okay? Whatever it is that you're gonna buy no matter what, you wanna know what that best price is so that you know when that golden aha moment is coming, right? You don't wanna wait for the signs because they may say sale, it may only be 20 cents off, and that's where we get fooled as a consumer sometimes. Not that Whole Foods would ever do that to us, but at any, at any rate, you wanna know what a real sale is. So when you're keeping your budget, again, you're gonna track your grocery receipts for about a month to find out what you're spending in a month, and it may surprise you. My family has gotten to where we spend about $200 a month for a family of four, and that's shopping, again, a lot at Whole Foods. So you need to know what your budget is gonna be. And what my goal for tonight is not necessarily to get you down to 200 if you're currently spending 800, but you're gonna walk away with tips that are just gonna knock down $100 right away, or $400 right away, hopefully if you're spending 800. We don't want that. <laughs> so what you're gonna do is you're gonna track those receipts and see what you're spending so that we know what we're working with, okay? So after you know your sales, you're gonna make sure you want to meal plan around your sales. And that was why we did that uh, video for you all on sandycone.com and why we've got our chicken chili here. What I love about the whole deal is that if you turn to the second page of your whole deal, I'll do my best Anna White here, you'll see a menu plan. Mm -hmm. Now what we've learned to do in our family is we try to menu plan with categories. Now, Linda already mentioned, this only comes out once every two months, right? We do not expect you to eat the same thing every day for two months. We don't think that's gonna happen. But what I did with this is that I went into categories from this. So for instance, they have Veggie Monday with, with a soup. We did our white chicken chili on Monday because I don't like to cook on Mondays. It's right after the weekend. I just, I don't wanna have to think about it. So I like something like a soup that I can put in a slow cooker the night before or a chili. Something that I won't have to think about that night, especially during the winter. Tuesday, they did a Valentine's Day date night. Um, again, that's fun for that. But for us, we, um, we just moved it around Tuesday. We always think of it as Taco Tuesday in our house. So that could be, again, we just made that a Mexican category. So it doesn't mean we eat tacos every night. It might mean we eat enchiladas, we might have a taco salad. I make tacos in a bag for my kids where I just put tortilla chips in a brown lunch sack and then meat and cheese and they think it's the cat's whiskers. 
again, it's just being creative, just mixing it up. Um, this week we did the, we took the tequila lime salmon that you'll actually see on Friday for their fish Friday. I moved that to my Tuesday because that was my Mexican. I'm allergic to salmon, I did chicken. It's hard, isn't it? You know, I'm so smart. I'm breaking that veil for all of you to think I'm brilliant. I'm dismembering that. Wednesday, we did the miso soup that's actually mentioned in Monday because we love Asian food in our house. It's the one thing our kids can eat us out of house and home. So we did the miso soup and we added some pot stickers and some rice. So yeah, that's our Asian night. The next week it might be a stir fry. The next week it might be, um, again, just a teriyaki chicken. So you see where I'm going with this category. So I can go on and on. I'll make you go to the website and watch the rest of the riveting video instead of talking about it. But use this as a template. And what you're going to do is that if there is um, a sale on meat, like there may or may not be this weekend, preview alert, spoiler alert, hot weekend deal, there's going to be a good sale on some sort of meat. Can't divulge. I can divulge. You can divulge. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, so okay. <laughs> it looks like our uh, hot weekend deal flower which we can talk about more. We are going to have uh, two great specials for game day this Sunday. Um, one is uh, a sale of 90% lean ground beef, $3.49 a pound, save $3 a pound, so it's save almost 50%. And then you get a bucket of wings for $5.99 each, and that's another $3 savings for the bucket. So that's a great, so okay, so. All right. Not a spoiler alert anymore. Anyway. So, for those of you that are meat eaters, this is, but you can take this principle: three forty-nine a pound for for lean ground beef, ninety ten ground beef. Those of you that are savvy shoppers, now that's a great price anywhere. That's not just a great price for Whole Foods. That's a great price anywhere, especially considering there's no antibiotics used. I mean, this is good quality meat. So you're not going to buy a pound and go home and make hamburgers with it that night, and then go pay six dollars a pound next week. You're going to buy six pounds, or like we did the last time this happened, um, we actually buy our meat in three quarter pound packets. We ask the, um, what would the right name be? Butchers, meat yeah. mongers. <laughs> we, uh, we ask them to put it in three quarter pound packages for us because we find that every time we cook with a pound, we always have a little bit left over. It's not quite enough for leftovers. Um, it helps us keep our portions smaller. And you'd be surprised at how much you can cut down your overall yearly grocery costs just by shaving off that quarter pound. So they package it for us. And what we do is we usually get about six of those packages. And we'll put five in the freezer and we'll, and we'll just cook one a week. And we'll do something, we'll use ground beef once a week easy. Again, whether it's a chili or whether it's a burger or whether it's a taco. So that's just a no brainer for us. So that's what I'm talking about. When you see that sale, stock up on that okay so that's our when I say meal plan around your sales once you get if there's a one day sale on um, organic whole chicken that was um, last month or the month before you know they can cut that up too we got you think whole chicken so how many times are you gonna cook a whole chicken they can quarter it for you they can you know you can put it in the crock pot and that can become your fajita meat for your taco Tuesdays or whatever it is um, we've got the navel orange one day sale here tomorrow. You might think produce, how much of that can I do? Well, you can always squeeze that into juice. You can freeze that juice into ice cubes that you then use in smoothies. Or do you see what I'm saying? So you're not, don't be limited in just, I'm gonna buy this for this weekend. If I beat this point to death, I can move up. You got it? You're, you guys are smart, I can tell, you're with me. Okay, we'll move on. And then the other thing I just wanna caution you is to no store policies. Um, that's one of the things that makes shopping at Whole Foods brilliant to me and worth it is because they're so gracious. Um, they're very quick to say, you know, if you have a problem with anything, they're very quick to take it back. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Um, if you want to try something, it's just a, a great, great place to, uh, to shop. You know, it's a great environment to shop in. So again, when it comes to their coupon policies, everything that I mentioned, you're allowed to stack those two coupons here. They do not double coupons at Whole Foods. Some stores do double coupons. Again, make sure you know what your policy is before you're going there. Um, there is not a coupon limit, I will say, here at Whole Foods. Personally, my personal opinion, just from talking to a lot of store managers um, in my experience, they usually say limit six of an item. It's kind of the unspoken rule, I would say, if you're buying, if you find a really good deal on something, limit yourself to six. If there's only six on the shelf, I would never be a shelf clearer myself. Um, you know, when you like have that great deal and you're coming to shop and it's all gone. I just, get enough that you need for your family, but be kind to the shopper coming behind you is kind of my personal soapbox. I will get down and move on now. So, we talked about budgeting, we talked about your basics. 
Um, again, once you know your budget, mm -hmm. another good rule of thumb is to split that in half. So again, there's going to be things you're going to have to buy that will never go on sale, like your bananas, or that you're going to buy whether or not they're on sale or not. You need to leave about half of your budget for your week to those things that you're going to buy regardless. And then you're going to use the other half of your budget to kind of beef up that stockpile or to really expand your pantry so that you have things to cook from during the week, okay? So you want to do a little bit of half and half because after all, a sale isn't a sale if you're spending money you don't have to shop with it, right? So you want to make sure that you're kind of even on buying the things you need regardless but also getting a little bit ahead of, of yourself. And what I was alluding to before about healthy cooking versus convenient cooking, I'm sure we've all been there where you get home from work, you're tired, you don't have what you want, and you go to the grocery store, and it's easy to spend $40, $50, $100 in one trip just to get a couple nice meals, right? Because you want that Alfredo sauce, or you want that ice cream, and it's not on sale. So you become victim to whatever the price is that day. So if you're planning ahead, um, and at least always have a couple go-to meals, whether it's Again, I keep coming back to a chili or a, you know, a, a soup like this that you know you can always cook out of the freezer or the pantry from so you can get by. There's been months where we've just really needed to catch up on our budget and we literally will eat out of our pantry. And what I mean by that is we will not shop except for our fresh fruits and vegetables and we just get really creative. And sometimes our kids get bored and I say that's okay. You will not be bored when you're at Disney World in six months because we're saving money. It's about choosing where you want to spend. And some people, again, say, well, why do you go to Disney World? And that's so expensive. A, it's not always. But also, again, we choose where to spend our money. I'm not going to buy my kids a lot of presents at Christmas because I know they would rather go to Disney World. It's a choice I make. I'm not going to buy a lot of convenience foods because I want my family to eat healthy, so I'm going to choose what I buy here. It's a give and take. You just have to know, and you have to get your family on board. Please. Ladies, if you have husbands, don't go home tonight and say, I'm doing all of this all at once and we're going to change everything you eat and you're going to love it because I guarantee you they won't, okay? <laughs> if you have kids that are used to eating chicken nuggets every night and all of a sudden you try to make eggplants, you know, roll-ups and everything and don't explain the what, the why, and the where, they're going to revolt, okay? So again, it's just about including. Include your kids in your cooking. Include your husband in letting him know this is why I'm doing this, or your wife, and saying, I'm doing this for the better good of our family so that I can take you out for a really nice dinner on Valentine's Day. And she'll say, oh, honey, I love it. Okay, so now let's get to the nitty gritty of the organizing. I know we want to get to our tour. So this is what I do when I go ahead and get ready to shop. You guys have your, you have your shopping list in front of you. This is a shopping list based off of that meal plan that I talked about that we did the video on, okay? So what I do is I keep my, I brought my massive rolling file folder here. There's three ways I found that you can keep your coupons. Some people like to keep them in a big three ring binder. They cut every coupon out, they organize it. God bless you if you're one of those people that was not my spiritual gift. I cannot imagine keeping up with all that. I would never coupon if I had to do that. Some people cut them and keep them in an accordion file. I do that sometimes for my internet coupons. This is what I do. So what you'll see in there, and you can come look at this later if you want, is basically file folders with all of these Sunday coupon inserts, and I keep my inserts whole, and what I do is I put the dates on the top of them when I get them, and I keep them all whole separated chronologically by date. And I'll show you why I do that in a second. But so what you see there is a massive amount of Sunday coupon inserts in their whole entire form, just separated by date, okay? You can get these from the Sunday paper. You can get them from friends that don't coupon. You may or may not go to recycling and get them there. I am not sh shy. I will ask people when I go to recycling, can I go through your newspapers? I will get tons of newspapers because after all, you can't take advantage of those stacking deals if you only have one Sunday coupon insert, right? You have to have, if you want to buy six of those deals, you have to have six coupons, right? Basic math. You can go at our apartment complex. We have a, a paper recycling right there by the mailboxes. I will look through. We get a lot of these in the mail now. I will look for those there. So again, just be creative in how you're getting your, your coupons and then I file them that way. Now what I do, 
That's it. You've got to find your coupons, right? So I try to help you all on my website on sammycone.com and tell you what the best deals I think are. Okay, so there's a lot of bloggers out there. I'm not pretending to be the only one. Coupon Mom, um, Whole Foods, if you sign up for their um, newsletter, they will send you the deals each week and you can do it yourself. So it just depends how much you want to do yourself, how much you want to rely on others. And what I'll do is I'll print out my list then based on what I need and what I see is on sale. So for instance, what you see before you, like I said, is for the meal plan for this week that we talked about. What I then do is go through my coupons. And I, you can either go through, like I said, my site that's already pulled out the coupons for you. You can search for the coupon, for different coupon databases, like a Retail Me Not, that will tell you what coupon insert you will find that coupon in. So for instance, let's just look at You'll see under grocery on your shopping list. It says tortilla tips, about third from the bottom of the grocery, right? This week at Whole Foods, the Garden of Eaton tortilla chips are on sale. That's our number one, right? We're looking for three steps. That's our step number one. Whole Foods also has a coupon in the whole deal, which I just happened to snap out for you, because I'm good like that. So if you look at your whole deal in the middle, they've got all the coupons. So there's a dollar off any one Garden of Eaton product. Woo, two out of three. Who thinks we're gonna get all three for this one? I know, you have faith in me. I went into, again, what I did is I marked down here, 122SS, that means I found in my searching, I found a coupon in the January 22nd smart source that I was just holding up. Here's my coupon from the Sunday newspaper for a dollar off of two bags of Garden of Eaton chips. Now, I had one whole deal. Guess where I found? That means I have this for two bags, right? But I only have the whole deal is one dollar off of one. So I need another whole deal coupon to pair with that little promotion. Guess what I did? I went to WholeFoods.com. And I can print the same coupons from the whole deal at WholeFoods.com. So here's my other coupon that I'm going to use. So I'm going to use two of my Whole Foods coupons with my one newspaper coupon. I'm going to end up getting $3 off two bags of tortilla chips. Now considering those tortilla chips are less than $2 a bag, that's a good deal, right? Insert applause here. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So that's, that's, the, that's the method that we try to use. So what I do is I go through and find as many of those kind of aha moments as I can that go along with the list that I've made and I write them out here, okay? So for instance, um, I just found another deal, Celestial Tea. I didn't need tea for my meal plan, right? But I love tea, I don't drink coffee, even though I'm married to someone that works at Starbucks. I know such a waste. Um, I love my green tea. I'm getting low on tea. I saw Celestial Tea was on sale. Okay, I noticed that there was a coupon in the whole deal. And then I actually found three places where there's a Celestial Tea coupon. There's one in the November 6th Smart Source, um, the December 4th Smart Source, and the January 15th Smart Source. So I just noted that all on the side here. Because to be honest, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I'm a worker. There's some days and I don't coupon. There's some weeks where I don't get a Sunday paper. It's okay. You will get by, right? I know, I don't always read coupons with you to the store. You've got, you've got to live, people. I mean, come on. The reason I do this is because I may not have gotten the 11.6 smart source. I may not have gotten the 12.4 smart source, right? I don't know until I go, I'm not gonna do this until I get everything written down, right? I only wanna make one trip to my coupon station over here before my trip. So I write them all down to see, okay? Now, let's say I have all three of those smart sources. Which one should I use? The oldest. The oldest. You guys are good. We're gonna use the oldest, right? Because I'm gonna save those newer ones if a sale comes along the next time, right? So always use your oldest coupons first. So I haven't clipped those out, but I'm gonna do that. Again, I found Cliff Bars, had a Whole Foods coupon, and they're also on sale. Couldn't find another coupon in the paper, but two out of three, that, that's a pretty good thing for me. Um, Kashi cereal, we love Kashi Goldene cereal. Whole Foods has a coupon, and I found an internet printable coupon. So again, I, you know how I said go to the store, the website, or coupons.com. Things like that will go really quickly though. You can usually print out two of those at a time. So again, print out your two. Um, the Whole Foods coupon is for a dollar off of two boxes. You see where we're going. 
Um, almond milk, again, this, is, this coupon was for the shelf-stable almond milk, which I'm usually not a fan of. My family drinks the almond milk, um, but we like the refrigerated. We've also learned to water it down. So I will actually keep one empty bottle of almond milk, and I do half almond milk, half water. My kids don't know the difference. It's like getting half for free. If I'm putting it in a smoothie, I don't know. But if I can get a really good deal on the shelf stable, which is the non-refrigerated, I can do that and put it in a smoothie or put it in a stock or something. So again, it's wor is it worth it for me to save a little money to get something I don't love? Yes, absolutely. So does that make sense how I kind of went through that? So I'm going to do that. That might take me half an hour or an hour, depending on how efficient I am that day and what's on TV while I'm doing it. Okay, so I go through and do that, and then what I do is I pull up my trusty rolling little friend here, and I will just pull, and I'll look on my list and see, okay, what's the latest, okay, October Smart Source, that's the latest one I have to look for, and I kind of go chronologically through them. Uh, oh, I've got two from the January 22nd, so I don't have to look for one and look for another, I just do it chronologically. And then, I'll cut them all out, and I literally try to shop. Come back to me. I try to shop the way the store or is organized. So again, I'm making an efficient round, if at all possible. If, you, if you're not familiar with the store, that just seems a little too too much for you. You can tell me I'm too much, I don't mind. If that seems a little too much, then just try to organize it like I have here on the list, at least so you've got your dairy, your grocery, your frozen. Keep it all in one section so you're not making your list. So I will organize my coupons in about the same way I have here, and all I do like you saw, is I just clip them to the back. I know, it's real fancy, isn't it? So this is how I walk into, this is how I leave the house, this is how I walk into the store. Every once in a while, what I used to do is I would take one insert from each week, so I had on me in case, uh, you know, like, oh, sometimes it would trigger memory. Oh, I remember I had a coupon for that. But that just gets to be overwhelming sometimes, so I, I don't carry this around with me in the shopping cart. I'm not that crazy, I know. I'm a little crazy, I'm not that crazy. So what I do is I go through and as I find my, my items, I take the coupon out and I just put it in front here so that when I get to the register, I have all my coupons I want to use and I hand them over. Because sometimes they may be out of an item, right? Sometimes, so, so that I know what I'm using and what I'm not, I move it from the back to the front. That's all, pretty simple. So that is what we do with that. And I think, let's see, so I talked about stockpiling. Um, the, the hot weekend deals and the sales flyers, and I mentioned the weekly sales. That's this flyer when you come in that you can get every week. It's got um, the sales on the front and the back for the specials that week. I love it here because it actually tells you how much you save. So you'll notice a lot of these are, say, $4, $4, $3, $4. $4. It's not 20 cents. You know, so when Whole Foods has a sale, they usually have a sale. Again, which is why you want to stock up, because you don't want to pay twice as much <laughs> the next week, right? And then the hot weekend deals, the flyer is more, is an accurate, it looks like this. It's a little yellow flyer that you'll see like this. And those run Friday to Sunday. And again, those are usually what we would call your stock up or your stockpile prices. And the only other thing I'm going to say about a stockpile, it, you know, this isn't extreme couponing, people. You know, we're not hoarding, we're not, we're not trying to feed, I mean, I don't I could go on. It drives me nuts. That's all I'm going to say. Get enough for your family. If you want to be generous, of course, you know, if you have, we, we get um, toiletries and we donate those um, at Christmas time. We do the shoe boxes. You know, I'm not saying not to be generous. Please don't fill your spare bedroom with 100 cases of toilet paper. No one's going to want to come even visit you if that's the case. So just, again, be generous with what you have, but leave enough for the others. Um, I think that's about it. So the point that I want to make with this meal plan, like we said, I broke it down per serving. I can move this off here. Just so you know, we did the white chicken chili on Monday night we talked about. It's about $1.92 a serving. Tequila lime chicken. I served it with rice, um, you can do it over greens, $2.79 per serving. The miso soup and gyoza that I did on Wednesday, and again, this is all on the website, um, broke down to $1.42 per serving. Um, we did our breakfast for dinner on that Thursday, $2.24 serving, and we did our appetizer night. Friday's always our family fun night, so we'll either do a homemade pizza, um, 
in, in the video, you'll see we did an amazing, the, the recipe is actually a broccoli, warm broccoli cheese dip. We used spinach instead, because that was what I had on hand. Um, it was a, so good. It was two nineteen a serving. So all of these, again, is you're eating for a family of four under ten dollars. Is that exorbitant? No, I don't. It's not. So that is the idea behind shopping smarter and not harder, right? Tailoring to your needs. Knowing my friends up here, you know, are saying they're vegetarian. This cannot, you know, this was supposed to have things in it. My husband didn't like. I took them out. Like I said, I'm allergic to salmon. You switch it up based on your likes, your dislikes, the sales. The great thing I learned when we were going through this, when I was um, developing this meal plan based on the whole deal, was again, I have kids that are five and seven. Are they gonna eat the tequila lime chicken? Probably not, but I can still cook some with the citrus salad and leave the tequila lime salsa off. So I'm a big believer in cooking one and being done. I'm not a short order cook, I'm not pretending to be, but that's not to say I'm not going to um, mix things up with the ingredients I have, like our taco salad night. When my husband and I have a taco salad over a big bed of lettuce and everything, making tacos in a bag for my kids and just putting them in a sack, that's no skin off my back because it means they're going to be happy and we're going to have a nice dinner together. So be flexible. Don't be so rigid. Um, and sometimes the meal plan is going to vary. You know, you might have the meal plan for the week and something comes up. It's better to have a plan and not always hit it all the time than to have no plan and be flailing all the time. So that's basically it. So I'd like to actually walk you around and show you a couple other little tips and tricks I have, unless anyone has any questions before we mosey. Yes? We should do the drawing. I don't know. I don't think they want to save money. I'm not feeling that. <laughs> do you want a drawing? I feel like Oprah. Who wants a car? You get a car. <laughs> right. Should I let you pick, Linda? I hope they're here. I hope they're here too. <laughs> Alright, uh, uh, the winner is Julie Carter. Woo oh! Excellent! Yeah. So Julie, you're going to get uh, a new pantry makeover with all of these lovely items that you see here. So it's, you're going to be able to feed your family for a week or yourself and just send them away and you can keep it all for yourself if you really want to. Um, I, you're gonna get a value coaching session with me so I'm gonna be able to either shop with you or come to you and just show you some of these things step by step based on your needs and you're gonna get the $25 gift card. So let's give her a hand. Yay. Okay, so if you wanna kinda of gather your things, we will, um, and I get if you need to leave, we understand, but we're just gonna do a quick like I said, about a 15 minute tour of how we would do this, and then again, some other tips I have for shopping at Whole Foods, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks, guys.